As I said during the prayer, the emphasis in chapter 11 <clears throat> will be on the works of faith versus the works of the law. And uh, it's going to boil down to your, your actions show what you believe. It's not your words that show what you believe. They help and they go with, but your actions will show what you believe. And that is what faith is. Faith without any action is what? Dead. Faith without works is dead. And so you can't say, I have faith when nobody can tell it in your life. And uh, it's a very, uh, well, it's a very important doctrine to know in our minds because we get to thinking that our what we say should be good enough. But it's just like anything else. If you have a wife or a husband and you tell them you love them, you could tell them you love them 50 times a day, but if your actions say that you don't, your words are dead. It's dead. It doesn't mean anything. It may mean something, but without a follow-up, without a proof of it, just like I tried to show that in a very big way the Sunday after Thanksgiving with the gifts that was handed out. A lot of times... Um, we don't realize why things are the way they are in this world. But um, Christmas being right after Thanksgiving, is it's really positioned there very well. Because if you're thankful for something, then there ought to be gifts given to prove that. I mean, if you're thankful for something, just saying you're thankful, it, it's good, It's it means something, but... It's really not finished. It's it's partial if there's never anything reciprocated. And, and we're taught in the Bible that you continue to give even when things are not reciprocated because that's what Christ does. But we're also taught that when somebody gives to us that we should give back. We should give back. And that's not talking about material things. That's talking about uh, spiritual things, how you speak, how you act, how you talk, what you do for them, lending them a, a helping hand or helping ear, uh, advice at times, sacrificing your time for somebody that's in a low place in their life. Um, the people that's done that for you, you know, you, you look for opportunities to repay that. Somebody paid my breakfast the other morning in, at McDonald's and I was almost upset about it because <laughs> uh, I want to be the one to do that you know I'm sitting here I got you know I'm not rich but I got money in my wallet where I can pay for my breakfast you know but I got to thinking they don't know that they don't know who's behind them you know and so uh no, I didn't pay for the guy after me either because I knew who he was and I didn't want him. No, I'm just kidding. I just It took me a little while to, to think about that. You know, I'm, this person didn't know me. I seen them driving away after they said, you're paid for. And thank goodness they drove a Chevy truck because I don't know what. I did. No, I'm just kidding. I better not go there. Better not go there. But I know now why it happened because it really made me think about uh, my Christmas message this year. And so I'm going to, that's, if, whether that story gets put in there or not, it, it sure helped me in deciding that. Uh, today's lesson, the emphasis is on faith and what it is. And chapter 11 opens up with just that, defining what faith is. And uh, number one says, how is faith described? Uh, 
Yeah, the word that uh, I would like to focus on there would be substance. If I said, define the word substance to me, how would you define it? There's something there. You ever clean, went to clean a place out and you found a, a nasty substance on the floor or a few days ago <laughs> we're cleaning out these old apartments <laughs> over here. There's something there. There's substance. It, there's tangible evidence that something went on there. You know, that's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you have a hope in your life, if you have a hope that Jesus will come in that eastern sky one day, well, does your life prove that? Is your life, um, are you trying to learn of Jesus as much as you can every day? Do you live by that faith? If, if not, that saying that you believe that is dead. It doesn't mean anything. And that's what the next word in that phrase that I want to focus on is evidence. See, evidence is another, it's just defining what substance is. There's evidence in your life of what you hope for, evidence of things hoped for, evidence that you believe in what you say that you believe in. Even the word believe doesn't just mean in the head. It means to believe it. Do people know that you believe by how you believe? That's the word. Um, the word leaf, L-I-E-F. It's an old word we don't use no more. It means to care, to be willing, to show action toward something. So to be leaf or be leave is to have substance there, uh, evidence of what you say you believe. It starts out with that, just to get us straightened out on, just uh, wipe away this belief that you can just know God and what He did, and you're good. Wipe that away, right away. Because He goes through and tells us, person after person after person that didn't sit back and say, oh, I believe, and then did nothing with it. Person after person after person lived their faith, and they received promises all throughout their life. God said, if you do this, I'll bless you. It wasn't always roses and lollipops, usually because they weren't doing... Their faith was mixed up. But when their faith was on key, even when they didn't, even when they had trouble believing these things would happen, they continued to work toward that end, you see. You know, how many people in the Bible said, Oh Lord, help me with my unbelief? It's hard to believe that this can happen. I feel like I'm doing all this for nothing. God says, So what? You just keep doing it and I'll bless you in ways that you don't even know. You just do what you're supposed to do. That's faith. Even when you don't see the outcome, you will see outcomes, but it'll be at a time when you don't even realize it. You'll look back one day and you'll go, wow, here I am way over here. I started way over there. Here I'm way over here, and I don't know how I ever got here because all along the way I struggled with unbelief. But though I struggled with unbelief, I kept doing the works of faith. I kept doing those things. Because I know when we get saved, we know God's true. We know He's powerful enough to do things. What gets us is that we're, we don't know if He's going to do it for us. We don't know if we're going to get to see this good outcome. We don't know if we're uh, wasting our time, our resources on this thing or that. We, we think sometimes we might be being too gracious and... We need to uh, pull back a little bit. We need to be more forceful or, or something. God says, I'll work all that out. You just learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. 
And if we'll be meek and lowly, we'll be balanced in this life. And you'll know when it's time to say, listen, man, you've got to change something. <laughs> That's not should be our default. Our default is meek and lowly. And then when people know that we love them, they know we're not saying something to them for preconceived, uh, for an agenda that we have, then we can say anything we want to them when they know we love them. That's faith. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Though it's not seen yet, we have a hope in us that says it's coming. And the evidence is in what we do. We continue to go to church every Sunday. We continue to go to church and, and try to get other people to come in. Is that, That's not because we've lost faith. It's because we have it, you see. It's a substance of things hoped for. And uh, number two says, what was framed by the word of God? The worlds. That's talking about the world systems. It's not talking about the creation in the beginning. This is the world systems that set up laws and, and such. Every uh, land that began, any civilization that ever started was framed upon the word of God. Even ours today in America. See, it's kind of been a reset. And those are even being questioned now. There's always these cycles that we go through. A civilization gets established, his law is established in that to protect people, and then that all gets bound up and wound up and turned backwards. And I don't know of any other place we could go to start another civilization now, though, do you? I don't think there's any land anywhere yet that hasn't been inhabited and a civilization begun there. Uh, Reagan said that when he was in office. He said, there's no other place to go. This is it. This is the last stand on earth, America. The worlds were framed by the word of God. Number three, who offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by faith? Abel. Was it because he was more able than Cain? Because of his, his faith was in the right place. He, he offered that animal not knowing whether he would ever see what that animal pictured or not. He had no idea. And Cain was the kind that said, oh, I don't believe I'm ever going to see that. I'm going to offer what I want to offer. God required a blood sacrifice. Cain offered the works of his hands. That's why he was very displeased with Cain and uh, very pleased with Abel. And that's all a type of, of Israel killing Christ when Cain killed Abel. Number four, who by faith was translated and had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch. See how it's setting it up for us. That he had faith and had this testimony. That's everybody that saw Enoch would say, well, he's a God pleaser because of his actions, what he did with his life. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Number five, to whom is God a rewarder? Diligent seeker. Doesn't say diligent thinker. Diligent uh, believer. It says seeker to show what a believer really is. A diligent seeker. That's one that, that uh, as Jesus said, learn of me for I am meek and lowly. Are you seeking that? You know, it's hard to be meek and lowly. We can make excuses for it. We can justify it in our mind. But they've gone to this. They've gone too far. And now I can drop the hammer. And I, I realize there is a time for being firm. There is times for that. 
But we got to do it in the spirit of love, not in the spirit of aggravation and tiresome and weariness. I could see that a lot in my own life with my my dad. You know, he he uh, chastised us a lot because of those things: weariness, tiredness, um, things like that. My mama, she was more loving, and though times she might have done that to us too, most of the time, she just wanted us to be safe. A mother's love's different, you know. They're, it's more of, I just want them to be safe. And so uh, she learned as she went on, it, it took her a while to learn it because she let us get by with everything for a while. But she learned she was hurting us. And I remember the first time she gave me a whipping, boy, it lit me up. I'll never forget it, but it changed everything for me. I was probably three or four years old. I don't even know how. I was young, very young, and I didn't want to take a nap, and I wasn't going to take a nap. Yeah, I remember every, every minute of that. I said, I hate you. She said, oh, yeah? (laughs) She got a belt, and she commenced to whipping me. And I was saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. (laughs) And I did more and more because of that. We feel safe with someone that's willing to take time with us, you know, that is willing to do those things. If you're just left to yourself all the time, you know how many kids are begging for attention? They'll do things just to get a whipping so they can have a little bit of your your time. (laughs) That's a good one, wasn't it? She beat me to death, I'm telling you. Well worthy of it. I needed it, believe me. Number six, who by faith moved with fear and prepared an ark? Noah. Yeah, that that was his faith shown there. He didn't believe it was going to rain at the start. You can bet. He's like, huh? I've never seen rain. Don't know what rain is. Water comes up from the ground and waters all the crops. but he built a boat. That was his faith. Number seven, who by faith was called to go out into a place and obeyed? Abraham. He's sitting there in the Ur of Chaldees, worshiping Babylonian gods. And uh, out of the just blue, the God of the universe, the creator, goes to him and says, hey, would you do something for me and leave your family and go halfway across the world and settle in a land that uh, you've never seen before that's inhabited with giants and and uh, you'll have trouble getting in there eventually. And, of course, Abraham's, what's he going to say? Oh, yeah, I can see it now. <laughs> His faith said, there's something to that. There's something tangible. I could feel the love out of this guy. I could feel the love out of this creator that's talking to me. I don't even know if at that time Abraham even believed there was only one God yet. But you know he believed that as time went on, for sure. Because we have later God coming to him and saying, okay, you've done this much. You've shown me that... uh, You're a man of your word, so now I'm going to make a covenant with you. And then he makes the covenant with him. I'm sure Abraham had questions. You know, he's going along and thinking, I don't know about all this, but if it's true, I want to do it. Because if what if it's what if it is true? You know, have you ever asked somebody that today? If they say, What if you're wrong about all this? I said, then so what? Here I've lived my life halfway decent trying to serve a God. And if it's not true, so what? But if it is true, what about you? 
If it is true, I talked to somebody just the other day. They told me they didn't want to serve my God because I wouldn't give them $5. I said, you're going to not serve God because of $5? They was telling me that, see. It's just $5. And I said, I know it's just $5. And you're going to turn your back on God for $5? I said, I've got 100 I could give you. But I know what you're going to do with it, and I ain't giving it to you. Number eight, for he looked for a city which hath, whose builder and maker is God. That was what was in Abraham that, that God said, there's something about that guy. I need him for this work that I've got to do because Abraham was in the middle of this city that worshipped all these other gods and he saw what went on in his father's life and you can read some other books to find that stuff out. Uh, the book of uh, Jasher has some of that storyline in it. It's not scripture, it's just history, but it is mentioned in the Bible. The book of Jasher is mentioned and so you can get some of the, fill in some of the blanks that are in the Bible with it and it talks about his early life, Abraham and what his father was doing and stuff. And Abraham was like, I want a way out of this. He didn't know what that way was going to be. He was uh, appealing to all these other gods and begging them to help him with this stuff. He didn't know the, the true God. But just the heart, seeing some of the things his dad was doing that was just cruel. He wanted a city that wasn't like that, whose builder and maker was God. He wanted to, that love that he felt from that guy that spoke to him out of, the, out of the sky, just in asking or telling him to go and do this thing, that love that he felt for that moment. He wanted a city with that guy ruling over it. You see, that's the same way we're supposed to be to the world. That one act of love that we bestow upon them, undeserving love, that whatever costs us something that goes to them, they don't deserve it, they didn't do anything for it, we just have compassion on them, and they're supposed to say, wow, I felt love from that. And the Bible says that that's how they know who God is and His character, is when we do those things. He was seeking a better city. The whole way through a Hebrews, it's been talking about a better, 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 better covenant than the old one. Something better, something new. And number nine, who through faith receives strength to conceive though past age? Sarah. Remember what Sarah did before she conceived? She was in the tent. The two angels and Jesus came in the Old Testament. It doesn't say it was Jesus, but we know it was a pre-incarnate Christ that comes to Abraham in the plains of Mamre. Genesis 19, do you remember that? And he tells Abraham, you're going to have a son. And Sarah laughed. She was in her tent and she laughed. But what did she do? Oh, that's just ridiculous. I ain't even... Though it was hard to believe, faith. She kept doing the things that she needed to do for that to happen. Even though she laughed in her heart. And it on down the road, she says little things. It says, I don't know why we're doing this, but here we go. But she received that promise, didn't she? Ninety years old, Abraham was a hundred. Number ten, what did these who died in faith desire? A better country and heavenly country. Number eleven, who did Abraham offer up by faith? Isaac. 
Boy, can you imagine having to do that? His faith kept him going. He didn't know what was going to happen. It doesn't say he believed that his son would not die forever. It didn't say any of that stuff. He just, he, he felt all that love from that guy. That, that was overwhelming, what he felt from that guy speaking to him out of the sky. That was, that was enough to keep him driving on through that tragic time even though it was the same voice that said, give me your son, the love trumped it. The love that he had felt, the friendship that he had built, trumped his own emotions, you see. That is amazing. But faith made him raise his hand with a dagger. And it was on the downward strike when the angel stopped him and said, hurt not thy son. You've just passed the second thing in your test. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confirm that covenant with you and your seed. You want to say something, Adam? What are we willing to sacrifice? Okay. That's good. That, that also shows us, I mean, he learned a very important lesson there. And that's, that's the same way we learn. When our unbelief starts getting more powerful than our faith, it takes us down roads that we can't change. The law of sowing and reaping will always be there. Look at all those descendants of Ishmael, how they hate the Jews to this day. It's the same thing in our life. When we get off of that path and get in our own belief, get into unbelief, we can't change what we did over there. We can turn it around, but you can, I can look at a number of things in my life that I cannot change from my old life. I can't change it. All I can do is start afresh and be in a new life. It's what baptism represents. Number uh, 12, who did Isaac by faith bless concerning things to come? Jacob and Esau. Even though he was, his eyes were dim, he, he wouldn't ever see it, he blessed his sons. Number 13, whose sons did Jacob by faith bless? Joseph. Jacob was dying on his deathbed, not seeing the promise. By faith, blessed Joseph's sons. Number 14, who chose to suffer with the people of God rather than enjoying the pleasures of sin? Moses. What country did Moses forsake by faith? Egypt. Egypt is a picture of the world. That's how we forsake the world, by faith. I mean, we're in the midst of the world. Every, our livelihood is from the world. That's our friendships are in the world. And when we get saved and baptized, there might be a time we have to say, old friends got to go for a while. I got to get strong enough to where I can go back there and evangelize them. You forsake the world by faith. Even though you, I don't have anybody. That's all my friends. That's my, that's my backup. Those people have my back. Now that's how I make money. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt. Number 16, by faith they through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were... Can you imagine walking through two walls of water 
and not having the belief, the thoughts that maybe that might fall in on. <laughs> it did on the people just right behind them. By faith, they kept traveling through there. Number 17, what fell down after they were compassed about seven days? Walls of Jericho. I can imagine what was on the people's mind when Joshua said, we got to walk around this huge city one time a day for six days and then seven times on the seventh day we got to walk around this city. Can you imagine the doubt that's going through their minds? What they were doing was loosening the ground up around there. <laughs> God knew exactly what to do there. They, them walls didn't fall down and crumble. They went straight down into the ground. You could, they can find them today. Those walls are in underneath the ground. What can we do? The individuals are walking around. There. What can we do? Me walking on this dirt is going to bring down Jericho. Jesus said, with just a little bit of faith, you can move mountains. A mustard seed faith. A mustard seed you can barely hang on to. It's so small. It's like a seed tick. Number 18. Who by faith had received the spies with peace? Rahab the harlot. Here her city is going to be taken over and she believes these two spies that come and tell her what's going on. Faith caused her to do that. Name six men of faith listed here. Forgot Gideon. Gideon's the first one there. But think about David. All the things he did but how many psalms did he write in despair, wondering if God was going to deliver him? He was, that's how he felt. But his faith kept caused him to do what God told him to do. Even though he wasn't seeing the results in the time that he wanted, his faith carried him through. Number 20, from this verse, what did these men do through faith? Subdued kingdoms. That's it. David subdued kingdoms. Even his son Solomon subdued kingdoms. In David's life, there were times when he didn't think he was going to subdue anything. But he stayed the course. Number 21, out of were made strong, waxed in fight, turned to the armies of the aliens. Faith did that. Not a belief in it all, faith, the working that belief, even though it seemed like it was hopeless, helpless, not doing a thing, he kept driving on. Number 22, what did others not accept that they might obtain a better resurrection? Deliverance, that's physical deliverance. That's talking about the, the denounce Christ or die. They didn't want that. They took death, they took torture rather than deliverance. Through faith. Number 23. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. Still faith kept them going. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. Were tempted. Were slain with the sword. What did all these through faith obtain? A good report. But not the promise. They obtained the good report. They stayed the course even though they didn't get to see the good outcome, you see. They got a good report though. It, we are talk, This is the good report. We're talking about their faith this morning. That's what they obtained. They are witnesses to us that if we stay the course and don't let our unbelief, even though unbelief is always going to be there, we stay the course and we do what we learn in here. If we believe this book is perfect and there's no flaws in it, it doesn't matter how we feel. It matters what this says. They believed God. 
And they, these last people here, they got a good report. I'm always talking about what people are going to say about you at your funeral. Will it be a good report? Something to think about. Lord, thank you for this this morning. Help us to live it. It's, it's one thing to hear it and, and say it's good, but to apply it every day, it's a fight. And we must die to the flesh daily. Help us worship you this morning and give you ourselves in song and in deed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.